What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you are, remember to smash that like button below the video. It definitely helps new people find the channel and leaving comments and stuff like that is really important. So thank you so much for being awesome and supporting in that manner. Now, many of my fellow YouTubers have already started to cover Randy Pitchford going berserk yesterday after being called out on microtransactions in Borderlands 3. Now, there's a lot to break down with this, but I want to talk about a couple of things because I think it's important. Um, first of all, to my fellow YouTubers who are at the launch event, come on, dudes and, and gals. I guess dudes can be a guy or a girl. Can we just as YouTubers, I have an ask. Can we not do this stuff? Can we not be flown out to uh, get a bunch of free stuff from game developers and then put up vlogs talking about how great the game is? And this isn't to call out anyone in particular, okay? This isn't to call out um, uh, to, to say that anyone's even lying. People that go to these type of events may genuinely believe that the game is great. But make no mistake about it, you are biased. It'd be like uh, getting a some sweet oral work done as a male or a female. Some of the best oral work you've ever received. And then being told to play a video game and give a review or a take on it. Obviously... You're going to have nothing but positive things to say about it. Now, that isn't, again, to say that going to these events will automatically uh, make you a liar. But we see how the industry, whether it be EA or Ubisoft or, in this case, Gearbox, treats people who openly critique their games. A guy like Randy Pitchford has blocked me on Twitter, and I've never really... I've done nothing but defend the guy. I've covered a couple of his crazy antics, but I've defended him. Um this is a man that released, you know, aliens, colonial marines. This is a man that is in the public space that uh, it is well within my re well within my rights to critique his behavior. Uh, and when you see that kind of actions, you see guys like Randy blocking people who are critical of him. When you see uh, game companies blacklisting uh, YouTubers uh, for being critical of them, uh, and then you see people that you trust flying out and going to Disneyland or going to this place in Australia or going to that place, having their flight paid for, having, having their tickets paid for. By the way, <clears throat> by the way, okay, uh, let's have some transparency in these videos. I see a lot of people uploading these videos. I mean, these should be, in my opinion, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, classified as an ad. All right. When you're when somebody pays for your plane ticket for your hotel and buys you meals and takes you out and you shoot video around that event, that, in my opinion, is an ad. All right. And even if you are an honest person and I believe at least the people that I know to be honest people. Why put yourself in that position? Is 2000 and current year, all right? Can we stop? We don't need <clears throat> this BS fellation from game development companies. We don't need that, and it makes YouTubers look cheap. It makes YouTubers look like they're so easily bought and sold, which apparently they are. Okay, end rant. Look, if you're going to do these events, please at least denote that it's an ad because we all know it is. <clears throat> Yesterday, I have a Twitter account uh, that I follow a lot of people on. Not Midwestly. I happen to be logged in there. But just to follow. And I saw Randy Pitchford. My entire timeline was full of like 25 Randy Pitchford tweets. I'm like, what's going on? What's happened? I know they had the Borderlands 3 reveal event. But I don't care about Borderlands 3 uh, until it's on Steam. Uh, will I play it when it's on Steam? Probably. Um, but I'm not really that hyped about it coming out on Epic Game Store. Now, I know a lot of my fans are fans of the Borderlands series, and a lot of my fans don't care about Epic versus Steam, and totally cool. I'm not, I'm not like, passively, aggressively giving you, uh, shaming you for it. In fact, you win. Uh, you win when you just enjoy the games for what they are, and you don't have to deal with all this BS. But Andy McNamara of Game Informer tweeted out yesterday, 
In my opinion, you can't say no microtransactions when there are microtransactions and then be angry when we make a tweet focusing on that angle. Apologies that you don't like the quote, despite Randy Pitchford. It clarifies what we feel is a misleading comment. <clears throat> Yikes. What was the original tweet? Well, we can go up and see what started it all. Uh, Randy saying, um, where is this tweet? Shilling, 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 more shilling, shilling. Okay. All right. Looks like maybe he deleted it, but eventually he retweets, uh, no one calling you a liar. We are saying the message is confusing and we wrote a story to clarify it. Thanks. Sincerely, it means a lot to me. Did you notice some of your readers believe uh, Game Informer called me out as a liar? Well, Randy Pitchford did say there would not be any microtransactions. Now, here is the thing. Randy Pitchford has a problem with the terminology of microtransactions. I, however, do not. I don't care if it's just cosmetics. If it is a tiny cosmetic item, let's say it's a micro expense, and you purchase it, it is a microtransaction. To say there are no microtransactions in Borderlands 3 is a lie. Now, I don't know if Randy... Uh, a aliens, colonial marines would have meant to mislead people, but he went berserk. Now, I want to clarify that I don't have any problem with cosmetics. Any reviewer that I've ever seen doesn't have a problem with cosmetics. So the fact that Borderlands 3 has cosmetics, I don't care. That is in no way a negative. In fact, it's a value add for people that want to purchase it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having... Uh, microtransactions in a game as long as they're cosmetic only and and they don't provide uh and, and they're not aided and abetted by like time gates and and stuff like that okay so we see him go off about this and i'm going to read through it but first uh, the argument which was great uh I cannot believe that your response here is to double down on an implication made in a tweet that I was being misleading. Watch this stream for yourself. I was doing the opposite of misleading. That was the most transparent preview event I have ever heard of. It's like uh, somebody points out like Donald Trump wrote these tweets. <laughs> uh, clear would be a statement like, we have microtransactions, but they are cosmetic and don't affect gameplay. That's my opinion. Calling us names doesn't seem constructive. I'm sorry we disagree. Randy Pitchford replies, Calling you names? You called me a liar. I need to know, is this your position here that I lied? No one is calling you a liar. We are saying the message is confusing and wrote a story to clarify it. And then he eventually cucks to Randy Pitchford, which is annoying. Because you can see the original tweet by Gearbox saying, Despite Gearbox CEO Randy Pitcher's comment about no microtransactions in Borderlands 3 during today's live stream, we've been told cosmetic items are still purchasable. What's wrong with that? Here's how I see it. A cosmetic item is a microtransaction. Not all microtransactions are bad. Hashtag not all microtransactions. Okay. But Randy replies to the one article, by the way, Game Informer, a, a, a company that gets almost no traffic on their tweets or in their articles. Okay, let's just be, let's be honest here. If we look at Game Informer, like I wouldn't be worried about their reach. Here's a, here's a tweet from two hours ago that is a whopping 100 favorites. And this is, and this is from an account with 2.4 million followers. This is a dead Twitter account, okay? But that wouldn't stop Randy Pitchford from going absolutely berserk. Come on, guys. Poopy clickbait title. Literally seconds before I said that, I made it very clear that we're doing cosmetic stuff like I did in Borderlands 2. You know I was talking about premium currency and loot boxes, not the uh, kind of stuff not being in our game. Why you guys would F me on this is beyond me. Thanks a lot. He sounds like a baby. A, I mean, first of all, cosmetic items are microtransactions, like it or not. What Randy's having a problem with is the fact that 
Uh, when you lump in microtransactions, uh, peep, there is a negative connotation on that. Okay, I understand the frustration, but his his concern isn't with Game Informer; it's with the term microtransactions. All right, Borderlands Three. I have made the commitment to consistency in how things will be done in Borderlands Two. I'm proud of our record uh, of goodwill and best in class consumer value. C whatever CEO talk. B3 will be consistent of what players have come to expect from prior B games, except B3 is bigger, better, and more valuable experience. We expect that to continue as we look to campaign DLC as well. And again, I don't inherently have a problem with DLC campaigns, but what I am concerned about is there's no way... Remember back in the day where people used to open the discs and like look in the files of games and they could figure out which campaigns were stripped away for DLC? That's when I hear DLC now, I'm always like, oh, okay, so that was part of the game originally and you broke it out to sell me later. I mean, that's what I, you know, that may not be true. I'm just telling you how I feel. During our preview event, I stood on stage in front of a live audience of press and streamers, an online audience of hundreds of thousands of gamers to share the first ever gameplay of Borderlands 3. We started at the beginning, uh, blah, blah, blah. So far, the live streamers have generated well over a million viewer hours of Borderlands 3. None of this is, has anything to do with microtransactions. While I was on stage, I affirmed my commitment that B3 was designed to be a Borderlands game is supposed to be. I talked about story style design. Uh, I made a commitment that B3 would be supported after launch with big, fun, valuable campaign DLC and character modifications. I made a commitment to this feeling right at home to players of previous Borderlands games. Our post-launch plans are in flux, and we are finishing our main game, but we have committed to a robust season pass, and I'm confident uh, we'll be measurable later as even better value proposition than Borderlands 2, which is the reigning gold standard in season pass value. That's your opinion. Uh, our post-launch plans are in flux, but I made a commitment that Borderlands 3 would not pursue free-to-play style monetization. Well, that's not what you said. You said microtransactions, and cosmetics are microtransactions. And again, to be clear, Borderlands fans, I have zero problem with microtransactions of that nature. That's fine. I believe Game Informer to have a clear understanding of what was done in Borderlands 2 and that it can clearly differentiate what was done in free-to-play games. I believe Game Informer should be in a great position to offer clarity. I trust and believe you, Andy, that Game Informer's intent was to clarify and not confuse. I would with a few words I chose on stage. I agree that a few words I chose on stage left room for them to be construed towards confusion. I like Game Informer's potential to avoid such confusion. Okay? I know you're objective enough to see how the words that Game Informer Twitter authors chose led to Game Informer reading to take the meaning that GI was calling me out as being misleading and lying. Well, you said microtransactions. They didn't. I'm grateful you confirmed that you understood and I believe that is not a lie. I did not have the intent to lie because I love and trust Game Informer. Yeah, right. That's why you exploded publicly and you didn't reach out to them privately, right? And I know GI's readers trust it too. It's important to me to have that peace of mind. I agree that Game Informer can provide a valuable... It's like did a lawyer tell you to write this? Thank you in advance for granting me some leniency in my emotional response to the situation in the moment where I had expected a team that I supported and applauded for holding the uh, line with our stance on AAA monetization. I was hurt to suffer claims of dishonesty and suggestion that we had fallen on this point from Game Informer. Okay. Well, I wouldn't call this a rational reaction by a CEO. But it was nonetheless. One of the best comments that came out of this, of course, was, I can't believe anybody would accuse you, the developer of Aliens Colonial Marines, of misleading people during the marketing of a game. Look, there's nothing inherently wrong with microtransactions as long as you're cosmetic. I get that Rando was mad because of the negative connotation with microtransactions, but that does not change the fact that 
He did, in fact, say there would be no microtransactions, but then there are microtransactions. This is a nomenclature issue. This is a wording issue. This is much ado about nothing. But Randy, completely flying off the handle, is not a good look for him. It makes me curious why he is so defensive on this, because I don't think we disagree on the actual definition of microtransactions. Well, that is the breakdown of Randy's breakdown. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's finish with a nice picture. We'll talk to you again real soon.